Hello everyone, welcome to MHS 4052 Human Relations Skills and Counseling Online in spring of 2013. And I'm very excited about this semester and I hope that you are too. I hope that you are looking forward to learning and growing on this journey. And I certainly know that I will learn from you all as well as you will learn from me. So I'm very excited about it. I do not want to take a whole lot of your time, but I did want to actually go through parts of the syllabus with you just so that you're not left to read it on your own. And if you have questions or something that wasn't clear, I want to just kind of hit some of the highlights of it for you and make sure that things that may not be very well explained in the syllabus, I can explain to you verbally. So um, I will skip over some of the less important things that you can just read on your own, but <clears throat> excuse me, I do just want to make sure that some of the things that are really important for you to know are covered. So. I just wanted to introduce myself briefly and you will learn a ton more about me as the semester goes on, but I just wanted to let you know who I am and why I'm teaching the course, etc. very briefly. My name is Brenna Hicks and I am a doctoral student. I am finishing up my coursework this semester and then I just have dissertation and a few other little things to finish up. So I am about a year or so away from my PhD, which is exciting because it's been a long time for me to be in school. <laughs> um, I've gone straight through almost exclusively since I've been in kindergarten. So it's been a long journey, but I'm excited to be almost done. And one of the benefits of being a doc student is that I get to teach. So I actually really, truly love this course and I'm very happy to be teaching it. I taught it in a classroom setting for several semesters and then have since modified it for an online version and have been doing that for several semesters. So it is a great course. You will learn a ton and my background I am a licensed mental health counselor. My undergraduate degree is in psychology and then my master's is in counseling. I also got a graduate certificate in play therapy. And if you don't know what play therapy is, you will learn more as the semester goes on. But it is a type of counseling specifically designed for children. So I worked with children two to 15 years old when I had my private practice. And I did that for three or four years before I had my son. And I am now a stay-at-home mom working on my PhD, but I will share lots of stories of my practice and working with parents and kids and families and all of those things as well. So you will learn more about that too. But that is kind of my background. Um, this is a great course because while it is a human relations skills course, it does have a counseling foundation and that's my background. So it aligns very well. But this is a capstone course for many of the majors at USF, so that's not to say you're only going to get the counseling side of it or the psychology side of it. You will learn just about people and life and communication skills and it will benefit you greatly regardless of what your future plans are, your interests, your degree right now. My email address is on there and I did want to let you know I'm trying to be very purposeful about blocking time for this course. So since I'm home with my son, I'm not online all the time, but I am going to be very diligent in the afternoons, 3 to 4, sometime around there, sometimes 2.30, 3.30, whatever, but um, sometime around there, that's when he does rest time, and so I will be diligent about answering emails and responding to questions in the discussion forums at that time. So if you email me late at night or early in the morning, just anticipate that I probably will not respond until the afternoon, and but I will get back to you within 24 hours for sure. My emergency phone number is on there, and so the rest you can read. Required text, Gamble and Gamble, fantastic book. I love it. Students love it. Lots of examples, lots of illustrations, lots of examples. Um, not a lot. I mean, of course, it's a textbook. It has text, but a lot of non-text stuff, so some little quizzes and some tests and some cartoons, and it's just very interactive. It's not boring. It's fun to read and it really has good content, good information. So it is going to be something that will help you a lot in this course in mastering the skills and techniques. Okay, course objectives, I do not need to go over with you. You can read those. Course policies, don't really need to go over those either. Just be aware that you will need to complete the readings before the week of that chapter. So in other words, if week four is chapter four, then you need to have read chapter four before week four begins because you will benefit the most from the lectures and from the activities if you've already read the material and you already know what the content is. I also briefly want to talk about late assignments. 
I have recently switched this policy because I think it's a little more appropriate for an online course. So if it's late, whatever you turn in, your posts, your assignments, whatever it is, 10% one day late, 20% two days late, and then 5% each additional day. It used to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and after five days it was an F, zero. But because it's an online course, you know, if you post five days late, I think you deserve to still get some credit, so I'm modifying that a little bit, but please don't take advantage of that. Please try to get your stuff in on time. Okay, so criteria for evaluation. I'm just gonna hit highlights here because I don't wanna bore you and waste your time, but basically it's divided into five major components. No, I guess six, sorry, I didn't scroll down far enough. Six major components. So participation is the first, 100 points, and you are expected to participate weekly in the discussion forums. That means your reflection, your activities, and then interaction with other students. So basically each week points are allotted just for posting and being active in the forums. So that's the participation. It was a lot easier to do participation when it was a face-to-face -face interaction in a classroom setting. Online, the only way that you can participate is to post, and so that's how I'm monitoring the participation points. Reflection journals. Basically, each week you will be posting in the appropriate thread in the discussion forum about your reflections about the lecture, about the text, your thoughts, any questions you may have, and basically something that lingers in your mind, what conclusions did you draw, what surprised you, what did you learn, what was your favorite part. Um, and there's some examples in the syllabus about what you can include. And so basically I'm just asking for your thoughts. Now the reflection will also go in with the activities for the week and the activities for the week will be found in the lectures. So I will make it very clear in the lecture what the activity is for the week. Now sometimes I throw out some questions or some things that you can think about and I usually will call them food for thought or something to think about. I will make it very clear what is required and then what is just optional. Now ideally I would like you to respond to most if not all of the food for thought questions and the things that I throw out there in the lectures. But there are going to be things that I'm actually counting for points and those are the reflection posts components and then the activities components and those will be clear as you go through. Reflection is just kind of from your own standpoint your reading of the text, you're listening to the lecture, and what you have to say, think, or ask about those things. And then the activities will be very specific things that you need to include. So more on that later, but you, you'll see. It's not as complicated as it may sound. And then each week's post is due by Sunday midnight. So the weeks will run Monday to Sunday, and Sunday midnight is the deadline for each week. Okay, communication essay or meeting review. I'm giving you the option of choosing whichever one would be better for you. When I did this in classroom, students were required to do both, but because this is an online class, I'm trying to reduce a little bit of the assignments because you're gonna be weekly posting. So you can choose which one you would like. And there is a detailed description further on in the syllabus, so we'll get to that when we get there, but that is 100 points. Reflection, journal, and activities are 200 points. There's no midterm in the course, yay for you. Yay for me too, I don't have to grade it. Final exam will be 200 points and it will be basically comprehensive over the entire semester and will be some form of multiple choice, true, false, short answer, and essay. However, that all works out at the end. Personal growth portfolio, the major assignment in the course. And basically it's going to be a presentation demonstrating your journey and your process in the course. And it will, you'll get all kinds of information about what needs to go into it as we get further. But it's a continuous process. And so what I'm encouraging you to do, even week one, is to keep a running document, a running journal, whatever you wanna do to organize it. Keep weekly thoughts, moments of clarity, you know, your aha moments, whatever you want to call them throughout the course, because it will help you in developing your portfolio. If you wait till a week or two before it's due and you try to look back over an entire semester and remember what you've learned and what you've thought about and how you've grown, 
you're going to be hard pressed to do it all and make sense of it and remember it all. So I would encourage you be diligent weekly about throwing some stuff into whatever you want so that it can help you with the portfolio. There's also a detailed description forthcoming about that. And then quizzes. There will be pop quizzes in the course. And again, online is a little more challenging. So pop quiz basically means on a Friday, you will be made aware that a quiz is available and you will have from Friday to Sunday to complete it. And you will not know ahead of time which chapters will be included in the pop quizzes. So you will need to be diligent about reading and watching the lectures and making sure that you're aware of the material so that if Friday comes along and you get an announcement that says chapter six quiz is available, that you take it and you demonstrate your knowledge of the material. It will only cover one week though. I wanted to clarify that. It, if it's chapter six, it's just chapter six. It's not one through six. So, okay. And there's the grading criteria. You can look at that. Okay, course schedule is there. The only things that are important for you to know the week of February 4th, I am presenting at a conference, and so we will not have class that week, which means you do not have any text to read and you don't have any lectures to watch, and therefore no reflection posts are due. And then March 4th is when your essay or meeting review, whichever you choose to do, are due. And then spring break, obviously, presentation, which is your personal growth portfolio, due April 21st, and your final exam will be completed by April 28th. Okay, so here are the detailed descriptions of all of the assignments. And let me be very clear right now, I've taught this enough to know what you all need to hear from me, so this is what you need to hear. This course seems like a lot of work when you first see it all spelled out for you. It's truly not. It is something that if you are diligent and you do your weekly assignments, it is very, very manageable. To help you manage all of this stuff, I have given you detailed explanations and descriptions of what I'm looking for in the assignments. So honestly, everything is spelled out for you in an outline form, in bulleted form. Everything is in the syllabus, what I'm looking for. The people that do <clears throat> the best in this class follow exactly what I'm asking for, give me exactly what I've required, and you demonstrate your knowledge, you demonstrate your mastery, and your grade reflects it. The students who struggle the most are the ones who do not keep up with the assignments and or kind of interpret what I'm looking for. So they do their own spin or they try to get creative or fancy or whatever. And in that, they end up missing the requirements. So literally, I'm, I'm asking and kind of expecting that you are going to look at the syllabus and you're going to give me everything that's included in my descriptions. If you do that, your grade will reflect that you you know, met the requirements. So <clears throat> personal growth presentation, basically the planning guide here when working on it is right there. Those are all of the questions you need to be thinking about while you're outlining and working on your portfolio. The FYI that was added, I am expecting more than just text answers for this assignment. So I don't want a keynote or a PowerPoint or a screen flow or whatever you want to do that just has text answering the questions because you could have just written a paper if that was the case. You will need to include quotes, cartoons, clip art, photos, whatever, but it needs to show your personality, your creativity, your investment in the project. So really I'm talking about like a virtual scrapbook and for all of you guys going, wow, I've never wanted to scrapbook in my life. I understand that, but it just needs to be creative. So if you're really into sports, you know, reflect that in your presentation, if you're really into art, show me your art, whatever you want to do. I want to learn more about you and your journey in this course through this portfolio. So the next page is actually your outline. This is exactly what I'm asking for for your presentation. So I'm literally going to assign point values to every single element in this outline. So if you include everything in this, then your grade should reflect that. So I'm not going to read those to you, but basically you need to go 1 A through E, 2 A through D, 3 A through C. So simple as that. Okay, communication essay. This is one option. The next one is the meeting review and summary. Both are up to you. I mean, I have no preference. Wh whichever one is more feasible for you, whichever one is easier for you to do, makes more sense for you, your schedule, whatever. 
So again, outline is provided, give me everything that I'm asking for, and meeting review also provided. Let me throw a little addendum out here. In, if you choose to do a communication essay, I'm setting some ground rules for you. First of all, it cannot be an issue with a boyfriend or girlfriend. So that is off the table. I know they're important to you, but there are other people in your lives that you communicate with. So it cannot be a boyfriend, girlfriend issue. If you're married and it's a relationship issue within your marriage, that's fine, fair game. But boyfriend, girlfriend issues, fighting, whatever, I don't wanna read about it. So choose an actual communication experience that you have had with someone and then go through the outline based on that. Second component of my addendum to this, you need to use appropriate language. You need to use appropriate context. I don't wanna have cussing in the papers. I don't want you to talk about going to bars. I don't want you to talk about drinking. I don't want you to talk about anything that looks on you unfavorably. So I want you to focus on communication, not on all of the elements of your personal life. So while those things are important to you, and I get that, when I have to read 30 some odd of these papers, it's very frustrating for me to hear things that I don't need to hear. So just keep it focused on communication. If it needs to be an interaction you had at work or with a professor or with a student or with a friend, whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter to me, but the focus is communication and it is not on all of the personal drama and issues and all that stuff. So if you have any other questions about that, please feel free to email me. If you wanna run by me the scenario and say, is this okay to use? I'm more than happy to answer that too. 100 points and again, reread for grammatical accuracy, spelling, etc. You know, you're all juniors and seniors, so please turn in work that is appropriate to that level. Okay, meeting review and summary. You will attend a meeting and you will write a review of it if you choose to do that component and that is all there. The final page on this is your permission letter. If you choose to do the meeting review, you need to have this filled out by the leader of the group. And if you choose not to do the meeting review, then you basically can ignore the last page. So that is only for the meeting review if you choose to attend a meeting. If you choose to do the communication essay, then the last two pages are irrelevant. So that is a brief overview of the syllabus. I hope that clarifies some things. And basically, as the semester begins, you need to, the first week, read chapter one, and then go on to Blackboard and post your first week reflection and activities after you've watched the lecture. And when you go on to Blackboard, you will see the links for each thread. So chapter one is there, chapter two is there, chapter three is there. The first link is a question and concern general comment type of forum. So if you have any general questions, comments, whatever, you can feel free to post in there and I will reply to that. Otherwise, just begin chapter one next week. And I look forward to getting to know you and reading more about you and learning more about you as I get to know you a little bit more in your posts. So if you have any questions, anything you feel like I didn't cover, anything that's still lingering as I wasn't really sure on that, you can either email me or again, post in the forums. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye.